thinking it might be fun to experiment with Michael Harding's new Caribbean turquoise. It sounds gorgeous. I'm slightly scared of it because I've read the ingredients and it's got thalo blue in it and I'm always a little bit scared of thalo blue because it's so strong. But it does look a very lovely deep Caribbean turquoise. Uh, sort of greeny, um, transparent, it just looks lovely. So I think probably its nearest neighbour in Michael Harding's range would be thylocyanine turquoise. So I've got that here to compare and certainly the first thing I'm noticing is that the Caribbean turquoise is transparent and the thylocyanine turquoise has some white mixed into it so that's very flat looking. So if I try some white into the Caribbean turquoise we'll get a, a more of a like for like colour comparison I guess. It's looking what slightly darker, slightly more towards grey, I suppose. Slightly less saturated once I've added the white than the Caribbean than the thylacinine turquoise. Sorry. So there's not a huge difference between the two with white added, but it does feel slightly heavier. The Caribbean turquoise feels slightly heavier and more greenish, actually, perhaps a little. But I'm really interested in its transparent qualities, so I'm mixing it on a white palette so that you can hopefully see some of the colours it makes when we put it with other transparents. Uh, so I'm going to try it with magenta. Look at that, beautiful, beautiful pinky purple. So let's put some of that in and see what happens. Wow, that's a really vivid indigo colour with a bit more of the pink. Gosh, look really nice royal purple and with a bit more of the turquoise it's making a really nice blue. I'm trying to spread it really thinly so that you can see the transparent colour. That's lovely. I've no idea what's going to happen when I put it with its technically its opposite I suppose which would be a transparent oxide red. So on its own it's a really vi vibrant orangey brown and with the greeny turquoise into it oh that's quite exciting that's making a really sort of organic looking khaki kind of color olive green a bit more of the red oxide and spread it out that's quite exciting look some really natural looking color there could be very useful With Yellow Lake, I'm expecting a pretty vivid green. Let's see what we get. Yep, pretty vivid green. So, but actually not lurid, still quite usable. And I wonder if I add some white, whether I get something a bit more landscapey. Still quite cool, but with more yellow. Interesting. Yeah, that's just making a good mid-green actually. A useful, easy route to a middle green. And then what happens with some lighter, softer colours? I wondered what would happen with lemon yellow. Just a tiny bit now of the turquoise, it's very powerful. So just a tiny bit into, oh gosh, look, that's lovely. That's a really nice aqua colour, very pretty. I guess that would be more for local colour or still life objects and things, but. A really lovely colour. And then with the warmer warm light yellow, I'm thinking maybe we'll get something a little softer. Again, just a tiny bit of the turquoise, it's so powerful. That's much cooler than with the lemon. It's bringing up the blue notes more. And that's quite a good sky colour, I think. Late afternoon sky, I could see that being very useful. And I'm just going to mix it into the purple because I can. See what happens. <laughs> That's lovely. I could mix all day. That's a really interesting colour. Not as scary as I thought. Really quite beautiful. Just have it on its own in the middle there. Hmm, that could be fun. <laughs> <laughs> 